Yeah, the question was uh, because of the live stream. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, will be too boring. Okay, so contextual groups, you have seen what I will talk about. It's the, the idea behind this realization. Notebook bar is a, just a blank canvas. You can put anything onto it and it uh, should be uh, enable you to quickly deal with the features of the program. So how was the idea to create a notebook bar and in particular the contextual group sex? What I will talk about and I think it's always a good idea to uh, take a look back to the uh, start where, where we come from and especially if we make huge changes to the UI. For uh, those of you that are not uh, really young, uh, star writer from the late 90s with a couple of toolbars, which is uh, pretty nice. You can uh, see that we do not change too much, but I, will, I would have uh, problems to deal with uh, all the icons and buttons. Not that easy. And it didn't change with uh, the updates. Got a little bit cleaner from the UI, but uh, the functionality behind the toolbar is very complex. You get a lot of features and functions and you need to understand what an icon means. Is Let's say this compass rose. I believe it's a navigator but you have to know that there is a navigator to understand what a navigator icon means and after that you can use this uh, control to uh, show it or not. And later version, a bit more clean UI. Okay. And with LibreOffice uh, starting from uh, 3, 5, 4 and down there 5. Um, we didn't change too much. To be honest, I uh, put the images onto the presentation to illustrate that our functionality grows and that we get more and uh, clutter the toolbar. The opposite is true. We are working on a better UI. We do it for years, for more than 10 years, and it gets better and better. Uh, for instance, it is with the uh, two <coughs> toolbars at top presenting uh, uh, is the, is the most uh, important information to the user, it's uh, pretty clear. It's uh, similar to other programs and you can use it easily. And um, this introduction of the sidebar, uh, check it here in the uh, lower part, um, we get more room in the uh, uh, conventional toolbars, so it was it is still a clean um, interface. And um, yes, failed for, for my side. So the question remains, what is it good for? What, what are uh, toolbars good for? First of all, a toolbar is a quick access to frequently used uh, functions. Often uh, it is abused uh, for, uh, to present all the uh, features and awesomeness uh, to the user. Um, I guess every one of you knows a program that is uh, hard to use uh, if you don't often started and frequently use it because every function is cluttered in the toolbar. It's just a convenience feature for the experts, but it mustn't be. And especially for a uh, office suit like Clipper Office, which is used for uh, many users, there has to be a, a precise and clear concept behind it. So quickly uh, quick access to frequently used function. That's the purpose of a toolbar. What I scribbled above, by the way, is an example. I will talk later about it, and um, it should illustrate the idea. Uh, it is filled with icons that you may know. You, of course, you can uh, figure out that a disk, second icon from the left, a disk is likely a, um, a function to save the document. Um, we made number of uh, icon tests over the last years that shows that a disk is really a good indicator for safe. But next to it, left, new. Uh, it could be uh, something different, but it isn't because it's the leftmost icon. 
back to my notes, um, increasing functionality, I told about it, you have to trust the icon. Uh, the safe icon is very clear and it's, uh, it's obvious what happens there. But if you move icons around and if you would uh, move the new icon from the leftmost position to somewhere else in the toolbar, no one would be able to find it because the new icon is not that striking clear. Uh, it is often called the muscle memory. You know where you have to click to find a certain function. Uh, all the clipboard stuff, undo, redo, left, right, not that clear always, but copy, paste, it's, it's next to undo, redo. So it's kind of uh, a positional information that you're using to figure out where a function is on the toolbar. And the most worst part of all these things is that a new user is um, required to learn all this stuff. It has to look at the toolbar, get the tool tips from it, and understand what it means to mm, show icons like ah, this one. Or it's just a stupid example. Let's say this one. I wouldn't know. So what could you do to improve the usability facing all the issues? You could, of course, uh, remove functionality from the toolbar. Make it cleaner. It's a good approach. Um, I put the question mark onto it. I uh, think developers uh, are not so easy to convince to remove functionality from the toolbar. Okay, so let's try another option. Grouping. Grouping is always a good idea. Grouping makes it easy to quickly find uh, a chunk in, in, in the um, 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 amount of information. Leftmost kind of uh, file information. Um, the next one is about clipboard and so on. So this one, it's just a little bit space between um, groups and you get an additional information. You can, of course, have also labels under it. Uh, it's not easy to read. It um, writes file, clipboard, format, objects, and help. Just an example. If you label the groups, it gives an additional information for the users. What else? You can use labels for the functionality because, at least me, I always struggle with undo, redo, is it really left to go back? Not so sure. If there is a label for this function, I'm absolutely clear. And if the style, this icon here, the uh, target, whatever it is, um, if there is a label style, you will know that it opens some menu for uh, applying a style to the, uh, to the option. So at least the less often or uh, less well-known functions uh, should get a label. And finally, it's always a good idea to focus the user um, attention to features that you want to uh, acknowledge to the user. So uh, it's just an example. The leftmost is new. You want to get the use users are looking for a new, so you make it a larger icon. Users should use styling features, so you make style icon larger. And of course, you can do the same for objects and perhaps also help if you want to draw the attention to these features. And it works even better if you add some more information to it. If you add a modality like color in this case, or uh, add more uh, details to the icons, for instance. If you have a very plain icon seam and you add more details to the relevant icons, it pops out of the crowd of the other functions. So those features are possible. So what did we do? We put it onto a contextual group. It's, uh, because it's a simple um, canvas, you can uh, enlarge the icons within uh, the uh, restrictions that we have in LibreOffice. We have three different sizes. So icons on the toolbar are small sized, medium sized, and large sized in this case. And the large icons are the most relevant functions. I guess people are looking for safe, for paste, which has also a uh, drop-down menu where you can get uh, paste uh, special and 
whatever option paste has. Style gets a big menu. You have, uh, I showed you in, in, in advance. Um, the idea is that we want to promote style rather than the direct formatting. And style should open the menu with all the styles, and uh, user can quickly change the appearing of a text rather than all the formatting options. And all the tools, um, the right part, this one, um, are hidden away a little bit. Because the idea is that our new user, uh, we call him Benjamin, this Benjamin would uh, likely just write a, a simple text. And he wants to make sure it is saved. The, that's the reason to make the save big, and he wants to format it in a, in a certain way. That's all. But sometimes um, he may want to add a table. And if you edit a table, you know, or in the past, uh, rather in the past, we had uh, um, uh, changing a UI. It flipped from a, a text editing mode to the table editing mode, which was uh, kind of awkward. The idea is that most parts of the toolbar should remain um, static, and only a few things have to be um, depending on the context. That's why this thing is called contextual groups. The rightmost part is not any more tools, because if you are in a table editing mode, you cannot add, or maybe you can add an image, but you likely want to um, style the table. That's why the table style has a big icon. You may also want to change the background of the table and access also the border, but what else? There are maybe a lot of more features in the table that could be changed, but it's not what you frequently do. So just this one. And similarly, for um, images, if you are in an image edit mode, if you have an image selected, you get um, everything is static from the left part and disabled in case you cannot use it. Formatting, text formatting is not available for images, but styling could be an option. Right now, we do not have a style feature for images, but it could be added in the future. For instance, make it a, a water sign. I believe it's possible right now. Um, I'm uh, running a little bit out of time, so I'm going over it more quickly. Left up? I think for images, uh, relevant information or relevant uh, functionality, it's uh, cropping. It's at least me, I do it quite often. And reset. It's not that easy to find uh, today. We, do, we, we hide the original size. It's a function that's called original size. We hide it really good away, in, at least in Impress. It was not so easy because switching uh, the uh, resolution of the presentation back and resetting the image size was not easy to find. It's a function that is often used. What else? Uh, chart mode, of course, if we are in a chart, we need to get some kind of styling feature which is on the same position. You can trust that a big icon on this position will present you with a kind of preset with something that enables you to quickly switch from one kind of visualization or modification to another one. And uh, the chart would, for instance, change from a bar chart to a scatter plot or a 3D chart, or whatever. And finally, with shapes, wasn't that easy to find relevant functions, but similar for this one. And this one is writer for writer. It was writer, how writer looks. Um, for Calc and Impress, it should be similar to Writer. Another um, goal is to not only have a static part within one module, so Writer with file, clipboard, and formatting option, but also for other modules. 
here in uh, Calc and uh, Impress, you also get file, clipboard, and uh, formatting in this case, with slightly different uh, features, but um, or properties, but the same functionality behind it. And again, the rightmost part is reserved for uh, things that you uh, contextually change. In the case of draw. It could look like this. You, have, you don't have usually a, a formatting feature, so it's rather kind of positioning that you want to uh, change. Positioning feels a little bit like formatting. So the idea was to put, instead of the formatting, the position information into this menu, which means you have to disable it if you get to a text in draw, you disable the positioning uh, features and show formatting uh, stuff in the contextual section. The lowest part here. Don't get a mice here. Okay, so my conclusion. Um, the outlook for the future. We, of course, we need to fix all the bugs. Um, styles do not work really well. All the the ideas of functions are uh, not uh, implemented. The uh, aggregated functionality, for instance, of uh, manipulating images is not available right now. We have uh, bugs for the uh, when the um, size is shrinked. Uh, normal toolbar gets a kind of chevron where uh, all the uh, remaining items are collected in the menu. We do not have it right now, or at least it's not really well working. Uh, but if everything is done, we need, of course, a better configurability. Right now, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a technical way to <coughs> deal with it. It's a UI file that you uh, change with Glade, and you do not have a good means to add your own uh, your i file so it's a dirty hack but you can you can change it but it's very dirty if that's all done i think we need to muffinize the sidebar meaning the sidebar uh, should also be uh, uh, gets a freedom to uh, be configured by the user and if i say configured by the user i have something in mind like um, Mozilla is doing for the Firefox in a, in a customized mode. Um, it should be kind of VisiVic configuration. You select the Uno command and drag and drop it to the position where you want to get it. It has to be as simple as possible and in a, uh, in a way that's a challenge for us because um, in Mozilla you have 20 or so functions I get a few more because AdBlock is uh, it's an add-on. So we have hundreds of uh, functions that needs to be offered to the user, and the UI is more complex in this case. But I think it should be easy in a way that every user can configure his own uh, UI simply, share it with other, or download, for instance. So, and finally, all the kudos go to the developers. Mm -hmm. And you can read the whole story, background information on the blog. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. <laughs> Just ask. Now, uh, there's a clear distinction between the top uh, toolbar and the toolbar, in the sense that the toolbar was something static and the sidebar was contextual. Uh, now, is there a clear vision of what should go to the sidebar and what should go?